Hello everyone, Danny here today to talk to you about the audiobook Dungeon Madness. Book two of Dakota Kraut, boy I almost forgot the author's name there, wow. Book two of Dakota Kraut's Divine Dungeon series, narrated as the first book was by Vikos Adams. This is an even better book than the first book. So if you heard my preview of the first book, or if you've listened to the first book, then you know where this review is going because this is considerably better than the first book, in my opinion. And I really liked the first book. Before I get into the book, though, I have a favor to ask of you. If you love audiobooks, books in general, please subscribe to my channel. Come join me on my audiobook journey. Now, to the book. What makes this book so much better than book one? One, you don't have that semi-slow start at the beginning of book one. My, I, I talked about this in my review of book one. My son, my nephew, who, who we, we talk audiobooks and share a lot of the same audiobooks together, they found the start of the book quite slow. If you look at a lot of the readers' comments about book one, a lot of people find it the start of the book slow. I didn't. But that was because it had a particular style of humor that applied to me. If, if the humor wasn't really something that I thoroughly enjoyed, I would have found the beginning of book one slow. Book two starts right into it. It doesn't start off slow at all. You, you don't have that necessary character building that, that kind of slowed down the start of book one. So you're right into it from the very beginning. You have all of the humor that you had with book one. You have Danny, you have Cal's interaction and their relationship with each other has grown. And, and, and so has their, their kind of banter and, and the way they deal with each, each other. And, and I liked that better. In, in book one, you've got a real period of time where Danny doesn't quite get Cal and Cal doesn't quite get Danny and, and they're getting to know each other. Now they know each other. They're a partnership. They're a team. And, and I enjoyed the interaction between those two better. In this book, you have Cal and you have Dale able to actually communicate with each other. That adds a new level to the book and a new level of complexity. You, you get this kind of competition going between the two of them. You have Cal who really wants to kill Dale, but to do it in the dungeon so he can absorb his essence, setting Cal up and trying to trick Cal or setting Dale up and trying to trick Dale and interacting with Dale. And they, they make an agreement with each other. And, and that agreement kind of turns into this verbal battle between it. It's a question and answer kind of a verbal battle between the two of them. That adds a whole new element to it. The politics are more complicated in this book than they were in the first book. In the first book, the politics of the camp and the politics of the mountain didn't come into play quite so much. Dale didn't have to be politically savvy in the first book. That is because Tom didn't take advantage of him. If Tom had wanted to, Tom could have taken advantage of him, but Tom was a really honest guy. Now in this book, you've got a lot more people introduced, and not all of those people are honest like Tom. And you have people introduced that will be more than happy to take advantage of Dale and that try to take advantage of Dale. And so Dale has to be politically savvy. This is where the book where you learn, did, did the alliance he made with the Dark Elves, was that a good thing? Was that a bad thing? And, and that really comes into play. The ending of the book was spectacular. Now the title, Dungeon Madness, doesn't come into play until, I'm going to set that down, doesn't come into play until the very end of the book. You think as the book is going along that you understand why it was titled Dungeon Madness. You don't really understand why it was titled Dungeon Madness until the end of the book. You have Dale's first true betrayal by someone he considered a friend and an ally, someone he trusted. Now, just before the betrayal, he kind of realizes what the person is like, and, and he 
kind of mishandles the situation, not kind of, he mishandles that situation, leaves himself and leaves Cal open and Danny open for an attack by this person who betrays him, and the person takes advantage of him. If, if, he, if he'd have handled it differently, he could have protected himself, Cal and Danny, from the very start. There's an outside threat that is introduced, and this outside threat forces the camp, forces Cal, forces Danny, forces the Dark Elves, all to join together. In fact, there, there are oaths made between certain factions and Cal. Cal really gains a good bit of power over certain factions due to the necessity of them making binding oaths to him. So he, he now has what he calls his minions, his, his humans, he has one really strong minion that, that he definitely has control over. And then to a lesser degree, he has other people. He tries to take advantage of Dale and, and to trick Dale, and Dale doesn't fall for it. And it's a serious outside threat that comes in, and they do have to work together. If they don't work together, they will not survive this threat. They work together. They defeat the threat. I'm not going to tell you how. If you want to know how, listen to the book. Well worth the listen, so you're not going to miss out on anything. They defeat the threat, and then you think, okay, oh, time for the epilogue. All's good. All's great. That's when the big betrayal hits. And, and the book really ends at a point to where it's kind of a cliffhanger. You Now, you all know my view of a cliffhanger, so it's not a true cliffhanger. No one's life is hanging in the balance for me to be a cliffhanger. Someone's life has to be. That's why it's called a cliffhanger, because they're hanging on the cliff. Their, their life is hanging in the balance. That does not happen, but it, it's... It's a serious, significant point at, at which this book ends. And you kind of almost have to jump into the next book. I'm not going to do that because I have promised someone else that, that I will listen to a book they requested next. So I'm going to have to hold off and wait before I start the next book. Oh, the sacrifices I make. I'm such a great person. I'm very humble, too. I'm proud of my humility. My humility is my greatest asset, just putting that out there, letting everyone know. Anyhow, back to the book there. It's narrated by Vikas Adam, who narrated all of the books that I have listened to by Dakota Kraut, and I hope Dakota Kraut sticks with Vikas Adams. He's a great narrator. He, he gives you all of the emotion. He, he does the different voices so you can recognize him from book to book to book to book. You can tell the males from the females. He this is why I have this here. He draws you in with his voice. I mean, he, a good narrator, can take a book and elevate it. Bad narrator can destroy it. Vikos Adams elevates this book. Please, Dakota Kraut, stick with him as your narrator. Love him as a narrator. It's Dakota Kraut. You don't have foul language in his books. I haven't experienced that yet. You don't have... Any real graphic set, you don't have any sexual situations at all. You will get now in book one, and Dale was kind of innocent to the world. And and part of the humor had a kind of a body feel to it, but it wasn't truly body. It, it, it wasn't truly, you know, dirty or sexual. It started out like it was gonna go in that direction. The humor did. And what made it truly funny was it didn't end up going in the direction it was going. Instead, it was Dale mishandling, misreading, misspeaking, something like that. You don't have that so much in this book. Still love the humor. The, the, the humor is great. It's a book that is chock full of humor, chock full of action, drama. Uh, like I said, you even get some political intrigue coming into play into this book. And that's where a lot of authors... Can, can take a series that's going in a great direction and all of a sudden take a step backwards. When they start adding additional elements, okay, we're going to add some political intrigue that wasn't there before. We're, you know, the, we're going to add all these different elements. Oftentimes, authors aren't able to, to keep the book playing at the level it was playing. They don't have the skill to do that. 
Dakota Kraut has a skill level, not just to keep the book at the level it was at, but to add those elements in such a way that that steps the book up to the next level. It takes the book and it elevates the book is what it does. And, and it makes it an even better series. And it ends in such a way that you're anxious to get into the next book. The, the violence in it is definitely a big part of lit RPG. Lit RPG wouldn't be lit RPG without violence. And there's a lot of violence in this game. But it's not graphic. It's not done in any kind of a way that, that I think would give anyone nightmares or any I, I myself would have had no problem listening to it around my kids although I'm also the kind of dad that like my firstborn son when, when he was just two well, well a year two years old he seemed to love Jurassic Park it had just come out and I got it and I watched it with him all the time he loved Jurassic Park and my wife would tell me honey He's too young for that book. It's going to scare him. It's going to give him nightmares. And I was like, no, he's great. He's fine. He's a boy. It's just dinosaurs. We moved to a new house. This house was a couple of blocks from a a train crossing. And so in the middle of the night, the, this train would, would honk its horn as it was you know, heading to the crossing. And it sounded faint. It sounded far off in the distance. It, it wasn't close like it rattled the houses. Well, Joshua started waking up he's screaming and crying and terrified and we noticed after a bit of a period of time that it coincided with that train whistle going off and then we realized that train whistle off in the distance actually sounds like the dinosaurs from jurassic park and soon as i stopped letting him watch jurassic park i mean within just a week or two he started sleeping through the night and, and stopped waking up afraid so the fact that I say, hey, this is a book that I believe would be fine for any age, wouldn't scare kids, wouldn't anything like that, be aware, I might not be the best judge of that, as the prior story there tells you. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you like my channel, subscribe. Turn on notifications. Questions, comments, feedback, it's what the comment section is there for. But most importantly, no matter what else, you do today. Make sure that today you listen to at least one really good audiobook. And I highly recommend Dungeon Madness by Dakota Crow, provided you've listened to the first book, Dungeon Born. If you haven't listened to Dungeon Born, listen to Dungeon Born first, then listen to Dungeon Madness. You won't regret it. Thank you.